Hello everyone, this is Shannon from That's So Poe, and today I'm doing week four of my 2024 reads. I'm a little late in getting this video up because I was just feeling tired and I spent my time reading rather than filming, but now I'm getting around to filming and I have some fun books to tell you about. Timestamps and content warnings are in the description box below. First this week I finished A Benny's Song by P. Jelly Clark. This is a middle grade historical fantasy by one of my favorite authors. I love the work that P. Jelly Clark does and I love middle grade fantasy so this was just so much fun to pick up. This is set in uh, West Africa sort of around the time that a lot of people were being enslaved and taken away, but it's done with um, a very magical and fantastical lens. So we follow a Benny whose village is kind of taken over by some magical beings who capture all of her family and her community and take them away. Um, and she ends up kind of ends up being sort of apprenticed to a witch and then going on a quest to try to find her missing family and friends and community. Um, this story has really, really cool world building. I loved the world building in this, especially because it's got both such cool mythology and magic and just fantasy elements, but also a lot of just interesting historical elements. P. Julie Clark is a historian, and so I absolutely love the way that he's weaving in all of these things about daily life and about um, belief practices and about uh, kind of community norms and uh, even just clothing and food and all of these things. It feels so vivid, which I think P. Jolly Clark is amazing at. Um, so I thought all of that was really cool. There's a really great quest line in this story. There's also a lot of found family as a Benny is going along, um, trying to, you know, do what she can. Um, it's got quite a bit of action, although I think that the pacing isn't 100% even throughout the story. I think P. Jolie Clark does pacing amazingly in his novellas, but in his novels I feel like it can get a little bit um, uneven, where there can be some really fast-paced sections and then some really slow paced sections. I also think that there's a lot of really fascinating side characters in this, a lot of supporting characters that just have really vivid uh, personalities, but a Benny herself I feel was not as fleshed out as some of the side characters in terms of who she was. Um, so I could have dealt with a little bit more characterization for her, uh, but maybe as the series goes forward, there'll be even more of that, more growth for her. She definitely has growth, um, a, a good growth arc in this as well. So by the end of it, I felt much more attached to her as a character. Um, and the themes are just excellent, always uh, with P. Jolly Clark, excellent themes. So yeah, this was a really solid start to a new middle grade fantasy series, and I gave it four out of five stars. Next, I picked up Mexican by Pedro Martin, which is a graphic memoir of Martin's experiences growing up in the 70s um, as a kid born in the US, but his parents and his older siblings, some of them, uh, are from Mexico. And this is about them going on a family trip in their RV down to Mexico to kind of pick up their grandfather and bring him back because their grandfather is not doing as well and kind of they want him to be with them. And so it's all about about this road trip, all about the family interactions, about the kind of identity that that uh, Pedro Martin himself has, as well as the other members of his family, and how there's this, you know, kind of um, intersection of American and Mexican identities, and how that is when they're in America, how that is when they're in Mexico. So I thought it was really, really cool. I loved the artwork in this. I thought the artwork was really, really stunning. Um, just so evocative, and just the insight into the family dynamics, all of that was fantastic. Um, it does get a little bit like um, graphic at times like there's some things that happen in this especially if you're sensitive to animal death I really there's quite a graphic scene in this for that um, uh, as well as just like some silly childish humor at times but other than that I thought this was just such a great graphic memoir and really I love I love graphic memoirs. I think that they're one of the best forms because you get to really feel that person's experiences. Uh, so yeah, I really enjoyed this and I gave it four and a half out of five stars. Next, I read Spy X Family Volume 9 by Tatsuya Endo, translated from Japanese by Casey Lowe. This series is just a fun one. Um, it is a really kind of wild, sort of set in a 
kind of Cold War era style of setting where we have a spy and he is trying to infiltrate um, some of the things that are going on in this enemy country and he gets a fake wife who happens to be an assassin which he doesn't know and a fake daughter who happens to be a telepath which he doesn't know and it's about all of the shenanigans that they get up to. Um, it has a lot of silliness, a lot of fun. Um, I think that the this volume had a couple of short storylines that were really cute, one with the dog which was super cute, one with the um, the daughter which was super cute, but it also had a couple of storylines that just aren't my favorites with some of the characters um, who just, you know, I don't enjoy their storylines as much, some of the side characters. Uh, so yeah, it was a little bit of a mixed bag in terms of which of the storylines I enjoyed and which ones I didn't, but it was also just fun and lighthearted and ridiculous, a lot of ridiculous things in it. So this series is definitely a joy every time I pick it up and I had a good time with it. I gave it three and a half out of five stars. And lastly, I read The Skull by John Classen. This is a a children's picture book that is sort of a dark fairy tale about a little girl who runs away from home and she runs through the woods and ends up finding a castle but the castle is inhabited by a skull and she gets invited into the castle but kind of there's some other stuff going on that's a little bit dangerous in the castle. This is definitely on that dark fairy tale side. There's some slightly darker themes in this but also there's so much whimsy and so much cuteness in the way that it's told that it's still reads really really lovely and it's kind of cozy as you're doing it. I also just loved the relationship between the little girl and the skull like they had such a fun relationship um, and the humor in this just really made me smile uh, and the artwork of course is really lovely. So this was a, another fantastic uh, installation into John Classen's picture book series. Um, I really love these. It's a lot of fun and I gave it four and a half out of five stars. Okay, that is everything that I read this week. If you guys have read any of these, if you're interested in them, or if you have any recommendations for me, especially for graphic works or kid lit or anything like that, I'd love to hear it. Just leave me a comment down below.